Yay, yeah, hello, hello, and welcome to this week Training Tuesday Live for Magnet Marketers, where our goal is always to help you become a magnet with your marketing versus being a bullhorn. And we're excited to dive in today to the social dilemma. If you've not seen it, it is a Netflix documentary. Uh, it's a drama documentary, if you will, but really going to be diving into the mental health kind of fake news and just overall brand responsibility that comes as an awareness, maybe if you've seen that or kind of given you uh, the Cliff Notes version, if you will, on what this documentary brought to light. But if we've not met before, hello, my name is Jessica Phillips with Now Marketing Group in the Relationship Marketing System. And my awesome co-host, he's Mike Gingrich. He is the president of Digital Hill, the co-founder of the popular apps Waftio, Tabsite, and a published author extraordinaire. How's it going, Mike? Hey, doing well this afternoon. And uh yeah, just got always always excited for uh, a good topic to dive into and talk about. So mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to connecting. And that's a that's a nice uh, backdrop you got there, Jessica. Yes, if you guys are uh, not aware, today and tomorrow is all inbound 2020, their first virtual event. So I will be speaking bright and early at 7 a.m. tomorrow. And for those of you who know me, you're chuckling right now uh, because usually my brain does not work before 10 a.m. So 7 a.m. I kind of grinned and did a big sigh when they told me that was going to be my time slot, but that's okay. We're talking about, I'm talking about dark social tomorrow at Inbound and I'm excited. The sessions today that I've been able to catch live have been phenomenal. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for tomorrow. I'll, I'll have plenty of coffee by then. There you go, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, thanks for that. So Mike, you watched The Social Dilemma, right? On Netflix? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I spent some time with them. It just, just finished it up here yesterday. Um, and, you know, it's one of those, I think that I might need to watch again. Um, yes. I think maybe even with some of my family, will, they would mm -hmm. be, you know, and because uh, it's discussing value, but I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, I, I need to back up and hear that again kind of thing. So yeah, it's on Netflix. Um, I forget what it is, maybe an hour and 40 minutes. I think it's, it's less yep. than two for sure or something like that. Um, yeah, it came out in August and, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of value, a lot of, uh, things that make you think within it. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that you said you're going to re-watch re it with your family. Cause I told my girls that I almost wish they were here right now. And I'd have you like repeat it loud, louder uh, for the kids in the back, you know, to hear, because I was thinking the same thing and I felt the same way from watching it. So to set the context, if you've not seen it, um, this is a documentary that is based around social media and its impacts, I would say on just us, as a society, as a family, as individuals all together. Um, you know, I like the definition you put in here, Mike, the social dilemma in essence underlines the three factors, technology addiction that runs parallel with dopamine rush, social engineering fueled by persuasive powers for mass manipulation and surveillance capitalism that has made data the most valuable product today. And the product, the film also talks about, uh, you know, political, polarization caused by social media that have, that has effects on uh, mental health, especially among Gen Z. While we do have some comments back to that, that sounds very dark and negative. We got to remember many documentaries are dramatized, um, but there are some underlining truths here and some things to bring to light because if we're honest, like this generation that's growing up, this is the first of its kind. We don't have, we don't know what the impacts are until we're just now seeing it and they brought up some some information there so we do want to touch on what was brought up um what they were saying want to hear your feedback have you seen it first of all let us know and and what your takeaways have been so far from it what like what is your overall kind of yeah consensus this is a, that you've seen it? and what and then what to do about feedback. it as a brand you know yep yeah. yep and and for those who haven't seen it then um a little further backdrop i mean they they interviewed um, a number of former top tech people um, mm -hmm. at Facebook, at Google, at Instagram, Designers and developers. at, mm -hmm. um, yeah, what did I miss? Pinterest. Uh, yeah. So these, these were Twitter. Um, so, so these were guys, Sean Parker, you know, Facebook, you yeah. heard that name. I mean, these type of things. So 
yeah, this was um, uh, mm -hmm. some people who are who are really in it and mm -hmm. who were involved in the key thing. So so with Facebook, it was like uh, you know the guy that was in charge of you know developing a monetization strategy, the whole thing is you know settled on ads and uh then you know guys uh google guys that developed you know, part of the designer team for gmail you know what yeah. what it looks like and and that was amazing to me just you know like a simple quote he's just like you know i, I sat there one day and realized you know there's 50 of us designers on here uh -huh. and we're we're impacting two billion people and yeah. do we are we thinking about what impact we're having on them by what we're doing. It was like a Jerry Maguire moment like that he had. I feel like what, what really got me before I say what he did is the quote that they said, you know, like you have to think about it if we're using these tools for free. So we're using it for free. So if we're not buying the product there you go. as individuals or as they said, users, many people on social, they're called users, <laughs> which they also said, um, you know, the only two people that can, that call their audience or their customers, users are drug dealers and tech companies or social media. Um, but they said, if you are not buying the product, you are the product, yeah. um, which is very powerful to think about in the context of just going in with this understanding of anything that we're getting for free, not just social media, but anything, having an understanding of what, the goal is for having us there um, or what we're actually getting out of it. And I think that kind of can set the stage for things that we're going to chat about here we, as we dive into what they discussed. But the gentleman um, that was de designing for Gmail, like you said, and for Google, and these weren't just like normal design. I mean, these people are data scientists, right? And designers, and they have a lot of, you know, education as it comes to the psychology of design, color, yeah. how does it make us feel, the layout, when you get a new notification that it pull, you're able to pull it down and get the ding and the rewards in our brain as this is all happening. But this gentleman, it was kind of cool to hear his story that he said they took a step back, like you said, Mike, and asked himself, what kind of impact does this have then on all of these millions of people from what we're designing for them to essentially be hooked on? And it was this Jerry Maguire moment to where he wrote this like manifesto to his team, sent it to a couple team members, and then it was passed along to, you know, the higher ups and um, eventually to the founder. And it was said, you know, hey, let's let's incorporate now some some personal responsibility, social responsibility, whatever you want to call it, um, to what we're doing to to know that hey, what is the let's do some research too on what the implications are going to be for what we design and what we do. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just just a, a load to unpack there, you know, with with. Mm -hmm with, uh, and, and there's so many pieces to it there. We've got a good quote in here. When the designers of the monster are scared about how destructive it has become, um, we should be scared too. So it's, I guess it's mm -hmm. the, one of the pieces of value of it is, I mean, yes, a lot of us here in the, in the you know, marketing social media industry are using it for um, business purposes. We just have to, mm -hmm. um, I think, be aware of um, some of the mm -hmm. other potential things that it is doing that mm -hmm. it has and that it might even try to do to us who use it. So I think it's just yeah. to be aware of those things. Um, because, uh, you know, coming back to that, there was, it was the guy from Facebook who said that, uh, you know, we're, we're, well, the Gmail guy said, we're, we're, it's the mm -hmm. game of um, capturing attention. You know, it's everybody, that's, that's all the social media platforms. They want to capture and maintain a, Attention. That's mm -hmm. how they will eventually monetize that, and and they're using, um, you know, psychology to do that. So so flipping back to the guy from Facebook, then who is part of the team that created the like, and you mm -hmm. know the the like, yeah. and and he said that he said you know um, 
yeah, initially, I mean, they had these, you know, thoughts for good. How do how do we spread mm -hmm. some cheer? How do we um, and help people encourage one another? Well, you know, the like was a great way to do that. And he said, mm -hmm. now reflecting back on this about how this could, you know, if, if a young female teenager doesn't get enough likes that it can send them down a dangerous path of self-destruction, self, you know, esteem battles. He said, mm -hmm. you know, whoa, what, what happened? You know, and, and that's- uh, and We so, talked so about th that on here a few months ago. It. We talked about like Facebook and Instagram hiding the likes and the reason they decided to do that was because of just that. It was because of mental health because they also correlated some stats on like what you were just talking on Mike in saying like the statistics of people using social media in their phones, spending more time on their phones. There was a direct correlation with is the more time they were spending and how the dramatic increase had rose for not just who was all on it, but the time that was being spent on it overall among young individuals yes, and young adults to the rate of suicide was directly yeah, yeah. correlated and it was huge numbers. And while, while we're sharing some of the negative that was presented here, we do want to, you know, I, I do want to put into context that we're not just going to share the problem because I always feel like the goal of, you know, discussing something is to think about not just the resolution, but just, you know, kind of look at it from a positive perspective, you know, all these things that we're saying uh, doesn't sound very positive and also to come at it from a brand angle too. I mean, we're a digital marketing agency. So are you, right? So like, it's, it's really kind of going back to having these discussions again, having the understanding of knowing what this can cause. And there's more that we're going to dive into on what it can cause and what it is causing, but then also looking at how we're responsible responsibly using it for good because they also mentioned on there, you know, everyone was feeling good and some people still hide behind that. It's kind of like having that conversation. You can't just hide behind the good, but they said, you know, they're standing behind. Well, you know, families have been reunited because of social, right? Like, you know, people have found yeah. love. Via Kidneys social. donated. Right. They're, you're getting worthy businesses, small businesses, like my business, you know, and, and many that I've worked with, they would have never been able to market or grow their company had it not been for social media because yeah. we couldn't afford the marketing budget. Right. And, and many of us, you know, right now during COVID time, this is our only means of social connection um, and staying in the know with our family and friends and, and things like that. It, I mean, there's so much good that could come out of it too. So it's often hard to focus on also seeing, okay, what are the other things that we need to look at? So, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I do want to kind of bring that in before we just get all doom and gloom, but there are some more doom and gloom things to talk about. Well, no, I, I think, I think what we're trying to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you and I, and, and those that, that we partner with, um, I think, you know, we're, we're trying to be in that, um, that, a safe sweet spot what, what it's intended for so exactly. that the right products or services can be you know found to connected to the right people and mm -hmm. and the you know the the right um person can find the right brand that's going to connect with them, those types of things mm -hmm. that sweet spot yes. um it is helpful and that's what this documentary does is mm -hmm. help us also kind of step back and see the bigger picture of the outlier areas that we yes. need to be aware of the, the, mm -hmm. the way that it, it can be, you know, that there can be some manipulation, political polarization, there can be, you know, um, mm -hmm. suicidal self-esteem kind of things that it, that it generates, you know, uh, when those things get out of balance, I think, you know? Yeah. And so let's hit on just a couple of points that they brought up. And then let's talk about what that is, because that's what I really would love to use the time for today, because definitely watch the documentary it is definitely worth watching. But it's also you have to remember some of the things that they're discussing in there, too, on, you know, documentaries in general or posts that you see on social that are just very, you know, kind of one sided where it talks about the negative of things. It could be very easy to kind of say, OK, then all this is bad. I'll use, you know, guns as an example. Well, I'm not, you know saying one way or another how you should feel about it. 
But, you know, there's avid, you know, gun enthusiasts that are doing it for good reasons. There are people that are using it for the wrong reasons, right? So if something negative happens, we can't just say, you know, just everyone is has to be black or white because there's some very much gray areas in there with people that are using it the right way and and how it's used for protection and that kind of thing, right? So it's kind of the yeah. same thing with social. So the things that we've hit on that this documentary has talked about already is definitely the mental impact um, to oh, mental yeah. health. It, and that's just, it is, it is what, that is what it is. It's just like anything else. If you're watching television, I know many years ago when I was growing up, my mom was worried about my brother playing video games and with violence in it. Right. And just the, what is the impact of just seeing that again and again, uh, people are talking about movies with action in it. And while it was just getting more and more intense and graphic, what was the implications of that? And in short, in my mind, garbage in garbage out, right? Whatever you're, you know, fulfilling your yourself with, that's what's going to be brought out. So again, goes back to what we'll talk on and on what you're surrounding yourself with. But they talked about mental health. Um, they talked about overall, one of the big things you talked about, like the likes and stuff like that, is the, the spread of news and the influence that it could have. That's a huge yep. thing for brands and for individuals, yep. especially as we're entering, we're in an election year and we're close to the election. It is, they talked about the algorithms Yep. And how based upon what we enjoy, what we watch, what we want to, who we want to connect with, because we're connecting Friends with people likes. that we know I can trust, our bubble is going to become an eco center of us and only, and could be, depending on how you're connecting, using it, a one-way eco center of, of just yeah. one-way train of thought, one-way thinking, and that's all you see, so that's all you think can exist potentially. Um, yeah. so they talked about that. Maybe you want to elaborate a little bit more on that. What was it? Yeah, they gave a wonderful example and they said, okay, think of Wikipedia. Everybody knows what Wikipedia is on the web and you go there to find out some information about something, right? Mm -hmm. And they said, so So basically uh, what a social media platform does with their algorithm is that if anybody goes to Wikipedia, they see a different definition mm. for that same thing. Yep. That's what an algorithm does. So, so imagine going to Wikipedia, um, you know, looking up a specific person, and each of us sees different information. So basically, that's that we have to understand that is what is happening mm -hmm. in our feeds because of the algorithm getting giving us information based on our past cues, our friends, our likes. Mm -hmm. we, you know, where we stop the scroll what picture we look at it's tracking all of that mm -hmm. so it is giving you more of what you have shown a interest in and you know they recognize that from a larger perspective when you're trying to evaluate a um, you know a situation a case that type of thing that you're you're really going to have to take a look at being intentional about making sure you know, it's not fake news. And number two, that it's perspective. It's, it has, it has you, that you get multiple perspectives if you want to really see the essence of something. Oh yeah. You hit it like perspective. And that's the thing that we said even earlier, taking a step back and knowing, understanding what we're looking at, what we're using since we are the product. I mean, we are here, we're getting this, these amazing, beautiful tools that can be used for so much good for free because we are the product. Like they said at the beginning, they, they said that because we are the product that essentially their goal, the whole platform's goal is to keep us on there longer because the profits come from advertisers that are able to collect this information on our behaviors of what we enjoy, what we're interested in, what, we would potentially purchase and now they're able to kind of meet us where we're at for us to be sold to. So it's understanding, like Mike said, what we're looking at. So if we're seeing just the consistent theme again and again, what was mentioned in the documentary was also, you know, how quickly then when you see that you can look at someone else's opinion on something and say, Oh my God, they're so uninformed. <laughs> and why do they even think they're right? And they're looking back at us potentially thinking the same way because each person is seeing their self ecosystem, if you will. Right. So, and that's all they see. And yeah. so it could be super confusing and, and 
honestly, if you look at the divide that's happened um, within our country with, with many things, you can easily see then how that could really come into play if that's all you're surrounding yourself with. Um, especially when, again, we are the product. So if, if media companies are making their money off of views and news that is fake or misleading, they brought up the stat there, can, it spreads six times faster than true news, six times faster. And we got to remember using online it can be beautiful, it can spread great stories, but unfortunately fake news spreads six times faster. And they were talking about, you know, and I am, I am proud of um, many things that Facebook and Instagram have done that, that, that wasn't all mentioned in there, but them trying to be the first to kind of prevent it um, or at least give us some, some information below to kind of check the sources and fact check. But as they mentioned in the documentary, there's no AI that can do that. There, there's nothing that can look and, and say whether on a hundred percent of the cases, if that's a hundred percent true or not, right? Like it could be it, it, some of those, it's again, a gray area. So you have to take a step back. And as you said, Mike, and look at the situation because they, they shared examples of, you know, um, pizza gate where it was a conspiracy that when people were ordering a pizza, that it was connected to se sex trafficking ring and that this spread quickly and it led to a person having good intentions of being anti sex trafficking, which I hope everyone would be, um, but was so fired up and didn't check the sources that he ended up shooting into this pizzeria that was not anywhere what the, the article is saying that would, would be, which was, they said there was a basement full of, you know, thinking that there was victims and stuff in there. And, and none of that was true. And an innocent person got, got hurt. So, I mean, think about it even in like what we've seen this past year, right? Where we get just a snippet of information that's shared and everybody comes to an opinion. And then it comes back later where it's like, oh, I didn't see the other half of that video. You know, I've seen where- um, Right, it didn't go deep enough, yeah. Yeah, my kids were seeing this one where this gentleman was, um, I mean, it went back and forth. You could honestly watch one clip and believe one one scenario where it looked like a, a man was trying to stab a child and then you didn't see where the other part of the video where like different things were happening. And, and it was like, oh my gosh, I can see how two people that will only get one nugget or one side of the scenario, depending on where they were trying to lead people in to their views, would come to one very strong, passionate conclusion without yeah. other information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I, I think, yeah, <laughs> um, you know, multiple thoughts going on there. I mean, I think that, you know, for, for us, uh, well, I talk about like the, the design, you know, and mm -hmm. how the design is in Intended, you know, there there is a dopamine effect. You know, the the you know on Instagram, you you pull down to see if there's new stuff. So so then then it's just you want to pull down again. Is there is there some more new stuff? And and then, you know, the dot dot dot. Someone is 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 responding. You know, uh, that mm -hmm. keeps me engaged. And like you said, mm -hmm. the photo tagging. So whoa, somebody. You know, I need to see what that was. There there can be that um, addiction. So we have to be aware of that. Be aware of that. And I think. Mm -hmm what it showed in the documentary, um, you know, kind of like that parallel story with that family was this sense of if someone gets too isolated and they're only in the device or on the platforms, you know, that's, then that's significantly where danger comes. So, so we have to be, you know, grounded in some, some real people, you know, relationships and, and context, um, and be, and, and ensure we're getting perspective. So, you know, it's on us as, um, you know, we, we talk about relationship marketing to yeah. develop a relationship to, yeah. to value mm -hmm. someone, to care someone and, and to, uh, to interact with them. And, and that, you know, is, is the essence, the, the platform alone cannot do that, you know, itself because you recognize the bent for it. The recognize that the bent is to, to pull you in, there's still a monetization mm -hmm. factor, even if it's free to use, it's trying to show you content to, mm -hmm. uh, as it said, kind of shift your perspective one degree so that you're, you know, 
interested further in a product that you maybe just knew about before. I mean, so th there's some good pieces on that, but but in the you know in, in the political realm where that's been you know these um, nation states you know have uh, uh, used that to try to sway other countries' elections, all that kind of stuff going on mm -hmm. where they they're trying to sway the popular opinion. So again, something that could be used for good helping me find a product that i could use can also be manipulated you know um trying to to shift thought in a negative way to to impact voting in a certain way you know so, so there we said be aware of these things i think yeah and hello hello to um just a few people in here and mike you're so spot on and on this so jim good to see you mike alton by the way, Mike Alton had a fantastic um, email that was sent to me basically ju on just this that one of my team members said, how timely, <laughs> you know, he just wrote a recap on it and he hit on something. Um, and by the way, hi, Kathy and yeah, hello, Facebook yeah. user in the group. I don't know who's commenting with us, but we'll find out. But um, Mike Alton had this email that was sent out and I loved it because it hit on such a great truth. And Mike, I don't know if you're still watching and if you have a link to where people could potentially find that or read that, um, or if anyone's interested, drop me a message, send me a message uh, with your email address and I'll forward it on to you. But it said, you know, if you're only seeing this one narrative um, and you're seeing negative, then, you know, really you need to take a look again, step, stepping back and look and see who you're following, who you're connected to. Right. And, th and that was what I was thinking when I was watching the show, too. I said, I am very privileged that I have a very diverse group of friends on the right, on the left, Christian, non-denominate, uh, you know, non-denomination, you know, no beliefs, whatever. I am surrounded by a group of individuals, individuals that I have not seen just one narrative. So if you are only seeing one narrative, take note of that, first of all, when it comes to stuff, even during this election time, to make sure that you're educating yourself because it is an important election. And this is this is where it comes into our brand responsibility. This is where kind of the rubber meets the road, if you will, on what, what do we do about this, right? Because the truth is the truth. Is social going to go away? No. Is it really great for us? Yes, when used right, just like any other powerful tool like email and phone and the internet and TV, anything, right? Yep. With moderation as well as, you know, using common sense. So <laughs> the first thing is brand responsibility starts with each one of us personally of looking and seeing what are we consuming? I'm a firm believer, like I said, garbage in, garbage out. If you are consuming the garbage, that's what's going to come out. And if you're only seeing one narrative, you are going to be biased. So note that, like take, take, have a conscious effort of saying to yourself, wow, I am only seeing one narrative here or wow. Like there has to be some other viewpoints that I want to connect with, especially as we're talking in, in this time right now where diversity is more important than ever before where we have a conversation around it. And there's a lot of really strong conversations that need to be had and discussed, not saying you put your opinion out there on Facebook on post. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, listen to different viewpoints and, and really try to, to see how you're connecting as an individual first as a brand. And then you can be helpful and kind of serve others in some of these other points. I don't know if you have anything to add to that first point, Mike, but you know, um, I think that's a great point. And I think that, um, you know, how, how do you draw some kind of analogy? And it's like, it's like, just because there's danger driving a car doesn't mean I sell my car and I'm done driving. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. um, it's the, the, uh, the, the road system works pretty well when everyone acts in regard to others interests within a safe perspective you know mm -hmm. and it gets out of control when someone or too many um you know go nuts on a highway and so and so it's 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 you know there's a i don't know if it's a good analogy or not but there, there's you know that there's something about that analogy. there's there's <laughs> that's perfect 
No, finish, finish your thought there. I'm just telling you it was perfect. Yeah. And, and I, so I think that, um, being aware of that. Uh, so, so for everyone to, to kind of say, we, we don't have to throw it out. We just need to be aware of its potential mm -hmm. for good, for bad, and educate mm -hmm. ourselves and others to, to walk in that responsible way with it. No. And I think that is really, really well said. Kathy, like, I love you first of all, but she said, I have to be honest with you all. I got so depressed watching the first half. I need to finish it, you know, and, and it's easy to do that with anything. As Mike just said, with, you know, driving a car, you hear about an accident or you hear about a tragedy with planes crashing, whatever it is, right? Like it, it could be easy with that, but this one takes a conscious effort. Um, like what you said, Kim, that you strive for diversity in my thought and it takes work for look for to look for other perspectives. Absolutely. It does. It takes work. And that's the first thing that brands need to think about is that one, if we're going to be using social, we have to know that it is our responsibility first to go in with it and using it for good and not to spread hate or negativity, but to use it first and foremost for what its most powerful potential could be, which is for uniting people and, and helping to build relationships that cannot be all done online. You can't, you can do a lot online, but the most powerful thing is going to be when you're together, when you take some time offline and you get to know someone truly, and you have an experience together while it is not going to, you know, while it, while it can be good to nurture and to get to know someone, it will never replace real relationships ever, nor, you, nor do, would we want it to. So that goes also for brands. When you think about this to think about the people that you're hiring and you're working, that are working for you, that one understanding that potentially they're having some mental health things going on as well with being home, with using online tools more often and not having that human connection, right? So being aware of that first and foremost, and then knowing that you have to use the tools to enhance what you want to do, not to replace it, yes. right? So we're enhancing relationships, we're enhancing our storytelling, we're enhancing our customer service, we're enhancing, you know, maybe our sales process, but it can't be the only solution that you have. The only solution that you have for human connection or that your children have for human connection or that your brand, you know, has for connecting with others. Can't be the only, absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and I think, uh, yeah, so Kathy was saying it was, it was tough to get through. So I think that, um, uh, you know, kind of, I, I think you have to just use it from an, a, from that kind of educational perspective. So these are, these are some of the potential negative pathways of it. So, so hopefully you can come out of that more aware that, um, those we, we need to to be aware of those who are more vulnerable in in our community that might be you know uh, our children teenagers you know whatever and so um to, so, so okay recognize that what can we do about that how can we you know should we limit time can we talk about these things do we you know just to kind of be aware of those pieces so that so hopefully it can bring some of those i think that's a positive kind of action thing out of that you know and then um you know, as we said, you know, from a business standpoint, mm -hmm. as as we, uh, you know, proclaim here, it's about, um, you know, building a that that relationship. It's a relationship marketing, which is a which is a a do good, um, not harm, no evil. You know, that type of thing. Yes. Be good to people um, methodology, and and that's you know proven to be that that healthy uh, middle ground. It's not you know an extremist. Um, perspective that's you know good that's polarizing or that's um damaging you know potentially someone's psyche or the way they see themselves you know that type of thing amen i love what you said about kids because i see it in my kids if i'm honest and i've seen it a lot more this summer you know when school is out and they couldn't go over to a lot of places we couldn't get out of the house right and my children became so obsessed and passionate about trump you know, with what was going on there, 
They were passionate about the Black Lives Matter movement. They were passionate about COVID. And what they heard and what they seen on TikTok that was really unfiltered was really stirring them up inside. And, and honestly, it was like, we, it was almost like I couldn't have a, a conversation with him. And these are my kids, you know, that like that we've, ne they've never been taught like that. So I knew that there was an issue and I am, I don't let them on other social apps. That was the only app they're allowed on. So when I looked at that with first with my own kids, I had to put a stop to it. I turned their phones into dumb phones, honestly, for a minute. And I was like, this is what mom's phone was like back in the day. <laughs> you just use it to make phone calls. Um, but what it taught me and what I think is the, what you were saying about brands and, and showing up responsibly too, is that we need to look at ways of how can we help our youth, our team in ways that are going to help uplift them in, in other ways. Maybe it's incorporating a mentorship program. Maybe it's incorporating a community kind of feel good thing, a, a group to rally around youth or, or something that you're passionate about, but using your online for good, but also matching it and doing something that's going to take a little bit of your time potentially to, to mentor or to get involved in some way, because let's just be honest, the world needs more healing overall more than ever with, with what 20s, 20s brought. So it can't just be an all online thing. It has to be some a handwritten, you could do cards though, even, but just incorporate something in addition to um, liking somebody's post is not reaching out. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's, that's one of those keys, you know, so, so how can you, you know, potentially use some of the technology as a force for good, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that, um, uh, you know, what, what's, what's, what, you know, how mm -hmm. I receive that at times, you know, and, and somebody's used the technology for good, they've wanted to, FaceTime me, you know, and mm -hmm. so we, we not, I might not be in the same state and, you know, in the same country, um, mm -hmm. but they've wanted to use that. And, and we've had that kind of, as mm -hmm. you and I are right now, Jessica, and that, um, and, and so that was, you know, using that technology as a positive, in a positive way, you know, so, so there's things like that. I think that um, uh, people have went beyond sending a, um, a text and they've given me a you know or a video message kind of thing and so they used it that way so um and and i think that um you know so so, so i think we need to be aware of that and, and again that's on the personal level um but it can extend to the the brand level how can we um you know communicate positivity recognizing mm -hmm. the that there's people are under significant stress there's lots going on so Mm -hmm. How can we, um, you know, as, as a, as a, just in terms of the core value of our brands, um, help promote the encouragement and uplifting of someone else. Absolutely. Make it part of your culture. Yeah. You know, we talked all last week with their relationship and ROA masterclass about starting from the inside out. And that's really, truly what this is because all that's on social is just magnified by what somebody is already feeling, right? Yeah. You have to know that one, you can't get caught up in the garbage. You can't ignore the garbage. I mean, you can literally ignore it, <laughs> block it, filter it, but you can't let, I, what I mean by ignore the garbage is like if somebody's saying or doing something mean to someone else or, or doing not, don't let it happen. You know, you can, yeah. you can make some, a comment of just like, this is not going to be tolerated or whatever yeah. and ignore it that way. But as brands, we are called to a higher standard of making sure that it's a safe space one for our team members to know if they're going through something, one with things going on that we got their back and we're going to help them su support them with any mental health things they have going on. We need to understand that with team members having children, still at home, some homeschooling and some of them that are, you know, doing e-learning, things like that, that we have to change up how we're operating at our brand level because of all the online. Now, granted, is all of this social 
No, but what are our kids going to do if they don't have interaction with us and we're not flexible as a brand for different working environments that our team members need? Our kids are going to look to the devices because they can't go around with their friends. So you have to incorporate some kind of flexibility as brands or allow that knowing your own culture uh, and your own team and what's needed. But you need to start thinking about how we can make some adjustments for balance yeah. in everyone's life. Um and, and then from there, thinking about ways that you can use this to spread more light than, than darkness, basically, you know, not sharing fake news, some of the common sense stuff, you know, not supporting, you know, um, the sharing fake news, being, being aware of that thing that's, you know, those things that are going on, but look at social, the way that it was intended. And I love how Kathy said it, um, you know, make it an extension, not, What'd you say here, Kathy? It was great. Or exclusive. Uh, like him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not an exclusion, but an extension. Yes. That's what it is. It's not going to replace human to human, just like the AI can't do it all and filter out all the bad, right? They, 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 there's no there's no yeah. technology that can do that, that has sentiment, that, that can understand that. Right. It's only human. So we have to use still some human to human connection always. Yep. Yep. So I can definitely recommend it. Uh, the social dilemma here just because it, it opens up it's it's good to help you reflect on a dimension of it to the extent that you might not have thought of before and and how you know there is a desire to um have you spend more time there and and there's actually a psychology that goes into that design to try to do that and mm -hmm. and and so and so some of that you know if if that's and a lot of these these companies are trying to to monetize. Ultimately, they are. So so they're not just a, a free for all. You know, it's it's a we're the product. They're trying to capture our time and attention and 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 move our perception a little bit. And and to some degree, for, that's what marketing can can do. It can introduce you to products and that type of thing. Um, but we recognize the potential for the slippery slope of it when it gets you know out of control. And mm -hmm. so that's kind of what I think where this is helpful. And just a good uh, thing to be aware of, conversation to have, and um, you know, um, who can you uh, go and hug and say they're important to you? Exactly. That's that's the big thing of this. I mean, it's not our typical how-to kind of segments that we do, but it's something that worthy of having a conversation around. Like you said, Mike, like conversation oh, just, yeah. is a good thing about it, and just overall awareness. Now that you know, what, what's the saying? Once you know better, you do better, right? Like. And just look at this and, and just take a conscious kind of gut check and say, am I doing the best I can do to be connected, but not absorbed? Yes. Aware, consumer. but not biased. Right. And, you know, using this as a tool, not a do all right. Like how you, just being aware of these things and then doing that gut check um, with yourself, I think is the most important conversation that I hope that this documentary brings up in all of us, because it, it did make me, as soon as I see that, that little girl, <laughs> would you see this, the part of, you'll know what I'm talking about, little girl crying and like, like with the self-esteem, I mean, like brings a tear to my eye, honestly, because I have three girls and I know that struggle and, and what social can do. And, good and bad. They've had, they've had both ends of it. So it's just, again, starting that conversation, have it with your kids, have it with your team, have it with yourself and, and truly look at how you can make this a very powerful and positive thing that you're incorporating within our lives. It's already going to, it's already here. It's going to stay. Um, so how can we turn it for the positive? Yeah. How can you be safe on the roads, you know, and, uh, uh, a, a critical consumer. And I think that's why the topic is is good here and relevant because we want people to think, folks. We got to think. We got to evaluate, and we, we got to know. And and you think best when you when you can can get get all the the details when you when you have enough information. Inquiry based learning, right? Like I worked with an organization. They said they didn't have that in school anymore. It was more like A B C, right? Multiple choice. Fill in the blank instead of taking the facts and looking at things like we we're talking about with different scenarios with elections and everything going on and, and things and and then coming to your own conclusion without being told the conclusion i think yeah all of those things so i really hope this was 
helpful just to have this kind of discussion around this documentary as well as I hope you take some time to to really watch it and maybe as Mike said yeah. watch it with your family too it's something that that we're definitely going to be doing and then think about it not just for your personal life like we said for your brand and how can we incorporate some positive things both online with social and then maybe even some things that we realized maybe we don't have maybe initiatives offline that we could incorporate too to make sure that we have that balance there as well and and what can we add into our culture like just just hopefully it spurs some ideas for you yeah. and we'd love to hear what those are and, and continue this conversation as well online and off <laughs> um but, but yeah i thank you so much for for joining in with us this week mike any last finishing thought um i just got to give a shout out it's uh april my buddy it's, it's, oh, it's good to good to see you say hi and stop in here and uh yeah so just i recommend to people yes it, yes it will as it was kind of mentioned early on it, it will kind of say wow this has got some heavy stuff with it and um <laughs> the, the social dilemma on netflix but i think when, when it viewed from that you know a critical perspective it can be helpful in that oh my god i, I gotta finish with cat uh Kathy, Kathy, here Kim. Oh my gosh, so funny because I literally said this, Kim, but she says, confused algorithms algorithms like diverse groups don't share and like negative or stupid posts. That is amazing. I have to tell you, Kim, like my computer, the cookies are completely confused because I manage, you know, different client brands and I'm acting as them online and myself. So they think that I have like the split personality schizophrenia or something going on and they're just all confused. Uh, so I get posts for, you know, like Mr. Manhole type uh, road work and stuff. And then I got like, you know, the stuff that I'm into crystals and makeup and all this stuff. They're like, who the heck is this girl? Or is this just a, you know, a, a computer that's at the library where multiple people use it. So yes, confuse the algorithms. You get to see a lot of interesting stuff that way. But yeah, so we love you too, April and love all of you. Thanks so much for joining in with us today on Magnet Marketers. We'll be back here next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, we hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week. See ya. <laughs> Take care, folks.